links to it. Links really are what makes hypertext hypertext. I mean, you have books that combine text and pictures and things like that. But really, the, the power of it and the original vision of, of the web and HTML was for like scientific papers. You know, in, in scientific papers, you have footnotes. And if you want to go and get more information about the topic that the author wrote about, you know, in the old days, you'd have to go to the library and dig it out. Now, when papers are published via hypertext, you simply click on the link. And it's funny, it's like, We've been doing that so long, you kind of forget that that was a revolutionary idea at the time. All right. So, um, let's look at where, I'm going to pull down the example from from Canvas. Just to let you know where it is. Um, there's a module for each week. And I put the videos and the examples in that module. So the examples we worked on last week will be in the week one module. So I'm going to go there and Going to module week one. There you can see the two videos, and here is the rabbit example that we went over last time. I'm going to download it and bring it up. I'm going to zip it, unzip it rather. Remember, in a compressed file, and you can tell on Windows it's a compressed file because. You see the thing that looks like a little zipper on it? Um, one of the most common compression schemes is called zipping something up. So zipping it up puts it in a compressed folder. Unzipping it expands it. And if you notice, like here, we went from 900 some bytes to 2,000 bytes. So it's able to compress it quite a bit. All right. And it's also valuable to compress your files when you have multiple files, because then when you have multiple files, for your assignments, as we will in up, upcoming weeks, all you really have to do is send one file instead of having to send like five files or, or whatever. All right, so the other thing I'm going to do that I talked about last time is I'm going to turn file extensions on. And again, this being Windows 7, under Organize, Folder and Search Options, View, I click off this hide extensions for known file types. And depending what operating system you have, there's different ways to do that. All right, OK. So now I can see when I look in here that this file is actually called rabbits.html. Double click on it to view it in the browser. And when we do that, we see what we had last time, which in a nutshell was a combination of um, headings, lists, and paragraphs. Okay. Let's look at the code. And again, to look at the code, I'm going to open up the file in a text editor. Notice there's only one file, nothing up my sleeves. All right. We're just going to look at it two different ways. We're going to look at it in the browser, which is how people would see it if it was completed and we put it out on the web. We're also going to open it up in a text editor. That's where we go in and make changes um, to it. So there's a lot of different ways that you can open it. I'm going to go to Notepad. And I'm just going to drag it into Notepad. And there we go. It's open in Notepad. So it's the same file, but we are seeing two different views of it. All right, to quickly review the stuff that we went over last time. HTML is um, the way that you def define 
what's on a web page is through a series of tags. The tags tell the browser how to interpret the stuff that is on your page. Tags come in pairs, all right? Starting tag, ending tag. Anything between the starting and, and ending tag is part of that tag. So in other words, the title is part of the head section because the title is between the start head tag and the end head tag. We have body. And the body goes all the way to the bottom. Everything else is part of the body on this page. Remember, the body is what you're going to see on the screen. The head, for the most part, the only thing that we see is the title, and that title appears up here in the title bar. Tags are nested, that is, they can appear within other tags, and the rule for that is if a tag starts within a tag, it also ends within a tag. So in other words, this would not be legal. Well, I put the ending tag for this over here. Because this li started within this ul tag, and therefore the ending tag should also be within the ul tag. I'm allowed to play with the white space, that is the blank spaces, to make the page easier for me to read. And that's an important thing, because easier to read means easier to change. You could literally make this one giant line of text going across. And the browser, if you did it correctly, the browser would have no problems interpreting it and displaying it correctly. The problem is, is if you needed to go back and change it, whether it be to correct something or add something or make other sorts of changes to it, it would be very difficult if everything was on one giant line. So therefore, we indent things in a way that makes it clear to us the way the page is structured. Right away from the indentation, I can see that that P tag is part of the article tag. All right? What really makes it that way is the fact that, that that's the way it's nested. All right? That's what really makes it part of the article. But visually, I can tell that instantly without even thinking about it by virtue of the fact that the way this is indented shows me that the P is included within the article. It's indented as part of it. All right, next thing we're going to do is look at making a link. Are there any questions over that sort of stuff? Next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a link. All right, so I'm going to pull back up the Wikipedia page about rabbits so I get the, the proper URL for it. URL, by the way, stands for Universal Resource Locator. It's the web page's address. And there's several links that we are going to, several kinds of links that we're going to look at today. The first kind of link that we're going to look at is a link to someone else's web page. In other words, not one of our web pages, not a web page that we created, but a link somewhere else. All right. Um, there's other kinds. There's links to um, another page that we've created. There's links to a section of a page. There's links to an email account, links to a phone number. And we'll probably, throughout the semester, we'll, we'll consider all these. But to start out, we're going to talk about linking to someone else's page. So in order to do that, you need to know the URL. And the easiest way to get the URL is to go to that page and simply copy it. So I'm going to control C to copy it. All right. So it would be nice if I made that a link instead of just a just plain old text. Just like I said before, what if you were reading something on my page that pulled the text from Wikipedia and you thought, gee, I'd like to learn more about this. All right. It'd be nice to provide a link so that the, the user can easily go and get more information about it. Now, the tag for a link is the A tag. And A stands for anchor. Don't ask me why, all right, but that's how it is.
but, and I'm going to leave a little bit of blank space here. So I have my start, end ta start tag and my end tag. Now I left some blank space there, so that's sort of a hint that something is missing. What is missing here? What is missing? Just look at that. How is it going to work as it is? I haven't told it what I'm linking to, right? All I've said now is I have a link. Well, okay, how many web pages are there that I could be linking to? Well, I could be linking to, you know, I'm sure there are in the billions, literally in the billions of web pages that I could be linking to. So the question becomes, well, which one? I need to give more information. It's not enough to say I have a link. I finish that thought and say, a link to what? All right? And that's where we have additional information about this tag. And additional information about a tag is called an attribute. Now we saw that up here where we put in a language of English. All right? And that helps with search engines and so on. So we had additional information. Hey, I have an HTML page. But more than that, the language of this HTML page is English. So it's additional information about it. Here the additional information that we need to supply is the address. And how do we specify attributes? Attributes are specified by the name of the attribute. In this case, the address for a link is the href attribute. href stands for hyperlink reference. Then with all attributes, I have an equal sign. And then within quotes, I have the value of the attribute. And in this case, the value of the attribute is the actual URL of it. So this now is a complete link. A href equals https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash rabbits. Notice that it starts with http. Well, in this case, HTTPS, but HTTP or HTTPS. That's the protocol that's being used. That's, that's saying how we're going to access this page. That this is a web page that we're going to ask a web server for. There's a colon then. Then there's a slash slash. And there's what is called the domain. The domain is the website that the other page lives on. So. If I'm creating this hypothetical site, I'm creating it for my own site. I'm not creating it for Wikipedia. So my assumption is, is that I'm going to be on a different website. I'm going to be on a different domain on a different web server. And therefore, if I want to link to a page on another web server, I have to specify as part of the name the web server I'm linking to. The rest of this then specifies the name of the page that I want to access. So taken together, this is the name of the page that I want to access. Now you'll notice that when I save this, and I go here and click refresh, that becomes magenta, actually. All right. If I open it up in another browser, and I encourage you to open up the same web page in a few different browsers, it's going to be less important to do that at the beginning, and it's going to become more important to do that later on. All right? Um, because web browsers, there can on occasion, depending on any number of circumstances, there can be cases where web browsers display the same page differently. And you want to make sure that you have accounted for that. Okay, so I'm going to go and pull up this page in Google Chrome, a different web browser. Notice that it looks blue in Google Chrome where it looked magenta in Internet Explorer. Why is that? 
What does the magenta link versus the blue link signify? That I've been to that page, and it's by browser. So I've been to, remember, I've been to that page, right? I navigated to it. So visual cue, hey, I've been to that page. And it does it by, by default, by changing the color of the link. And by default, the default color for a visited link is this sort of magenta. Whereas when I open up Google Chrome, I have not been to that page. Google Chrome. So Google Chrome doesn't know that I visited the page because what you do in Internet Explorer, Chrome doesn't know and vice versa. Now if I click on it and go back to that page, notice that it changed and it's a slightly different shade of magenta, but it's no longer blue. It's no longer the color blue that it was before. All right. That's a useful navigation technique. All right. That way, if someone is looking for something on your site, they can view and they can see which pages they've already tried. Let's say they're looking for someone's phone number. And you click a few pages and you haven't found it yet. Well, if you change the color of the link to show what pages you visited, you sort of know, OK, I've already visited these pages. Let's not go to them again, because that doesn't have the person's phone number that I want. OK? So to review. Attributes are additional information about some HTML element. In this case, the href attribute of an A, of a link tag, an anchor tag, specifies the web page that I want. And in the case of me wanting a web page that's on someone else's web server, someone else's web page, I say, I copy the address, and it must start with the HTTP. If it doesn't, let's say I take that out and I just put the address without the HTTP. Not going to work. Tells me the web page is not found. And the reason for that is without the HTTP, it thinks that this is one of my web pages. All right, it looks for it on my server, on my domain. And of course, I don't have a page name this on my server, my domain. And therefore, it blows up. But if we put the HTTP or HTTPS there, whoops, then I can get to it OK. About this. Now, the link to someone else's web page. What if we have a web page? All right. Um, let's do a web page about famous rabbits. Actually, I'm going to make this a separate article, just for laughs. Again, remember I said that sometimes there's, it's not clear to make it part of one article or several articles and all that. I guess don't sweat it too much. I wanted to demonstrate the fact that you can have more than one article, so I made it a separate article. And I'm going to do some things with linking in a few minutes here um, that, that, will, that, that makes it better the fact that I make these separate articles. But if you would have put this as part of the same article, then, then don't worry about it. It's, it's not really that important. Just, uh, again, what makes sense to you is probably the right way to go. So I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to put an H1. It's the top level heading in this article. And I'm going to say famous rabbits.
I'm going to make a list of them. And what order are these lists going to be in? Is this going to be the result of some rabbit popularity poll or anything like that? No, it's just going to be the order that I think of them or that makes sense to me. So I'm going to make it an unordered list. It's not going to be a huge list because I could only think of two famous rabbits. Maybe, oh, I couldn't think of a third. I just thought of a third one. All right. One famous rabbit is of course, Bugs Bunny. One of the best cartoon characters there, there are. Another famous rabbit is, I don't remember the name of it, but the rabbit that was in Alice in Wonderland. Does anyone know what the name of that rabbit was? The White Rabbit. And the other one, of course, is the Easter Bunny. Who can forget the Easter Bunny? So, I put that there as an unordered list. I now look at this page again. There it goes and I have my famous rabbits down here. Now, let's say, you know, if I started to actually putting in all the information about all of these famous rabbits, this web page would get very long at some point, especially if I could think of two or three more, right? So at some point, you know, your job as a web designer is to figure out what's the best amount of content to have on one page, right? You're, not gonna, you're probably not going to put everything all on one page. That's overkill and people have to scroll a long time and, and so on. You know, it's a good idea to organize so that you take and put stuff that's related on one page and logically organize the pages of your site um, you know, in a way that makes sense for your users. By the same token, I'm not necessarily going to have a separate web page for every little piece of information. There's stuff that I can combine um, if I want. So let's say that Bugs Bunny is important enough that I want to have a web page just for Bugs Bunny. Okay? So I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a new web page. I'm actually gonna make the new web page by saving the old as Bugs Bunny, or just Bugs. Change the title of it. Bugs Bunny is a popular American cartoon rabbit he is on Warner Brothers cartoons and so on all right, so I'm going to go and I'm going to save that as bugs, which I already did. And I can view this page. All right, there we go. All right, now, ideally, I'd want to make that a link. Now, this is a different kind of web page. This isn't a page that lives on someone else's web server. This is one of my pages that is located in the exact same folder as my other web page. All right, and that's important. Because to do that then, the rule 
rules for how I specify the URL are a little different in that case. I don't put in the HTTP in front of it. I don't put in the slash slash. If it's in the same folder as my other page, which this one is, all right, all I do is say a href equal the name of the page, bugs.html, and that's it. So none of that HTTPS, I don't have to put the name of my server, I don't have to put the domain, and I don't have to put all these things. If it's in the same folder, all I do is say href equal bugs.html. So I do that then, and Bugs Bunny now is a link, all right? The other two aren't because I haven't made those links yet. And if I click on it, I get taken to maybe that page. Not sure what problem Internet Explorer is having. Let's view it in Chrome. So I click on that, I go to that page. All right. So, two kinds of links that we've looked at so far a link to someone else's page, a link to one of my own pages. The link tag is the same, the only thing that's different is the value of the attribute. Again, the href is the attribute. All attributes are going to look like this. The name of the attribute, an equal sign, and then the value of the attribute. It's the same thing we have up here. The name of the attribute, an equal sign, and the value of the attribute. The difference is, is in the case of one of my web pages, if it's in the same folder, I just give the name of the file. Whereas if it is someone else's web page, I have to give the URL. Questions about this? There's a third kind of link that we're going to look at. There's, there's, again, there's several more links even after these two. But there's a third kind of link that we're going to look at. And oftentimes, Oftentimes, this kind of link is used with FAQs. I'm trying to find an example of it really quick. Ah, here we go, finally. All right, doesn't matter what OpenBSD is. All right, what's interesting is the way these links work. Now, notice way, the way this link works. We come to this page. We're on FAQ1.html. Notice that there's a series of links on the top of the page. When I click this link, 
I do not go to another page. I go to a different section of the same page. So, for example, what is new in OpenBSD 5.7? That's way down here. Okay, I lied. Oh, no, it is. There we go. What is new in, in OpenBSD 5.7? All right, it's there. Now, I could scroll to that if I wanted to. But this link jumps me right to that spot on the page. So if I click what is new in OpenBSD, boom, that pops to the top of the page. All right. Or if I want to know what's included in the next, when is the next release of BSD. I click that and there it goes. This is an internal link. It's a link to a different section of my page. All right. So this is different than the other two, right? It's not a link to um, someone else's page. It's not a link to another of my pages. It's a link to a section of itself. All right? In other words, I'm jumping forward. This is really good for a couple of things. All right? This is good when you have long pages, when you have pages that have a lot of stuff on them because then you can jump to the section of the page that you're interested in very quickly. So frequently asked questions is a great example of something that this is very good for. Because with frequently asked questions, usually you have a long page, you have several questions, maybe some lengthy answers about, uh, about those questions, but the user doesn't necessarily want to have to scroll through the whole page to get to the bit of information they want. It's nice just to be able to click on the link and go to it. The other thing that this is good for, is often used for, is like directories, phone directories of, of someone, uh, of some organization. So, for example, it might have going along the top of the page the alphabet. So if I want to see the people whose names start with S, I can click on S and it jumps right to that section of the page and I don't have to scroll down. All right. So, let's see how we do that. I'm going to put a couple of links on this page and again I'm going to make a list of links so I'm going to use a UL I'm going to put some space in my link so I can put the attribute My list, again, consists of a series of LIs. So I'll put one for the rabbits overview. I'll put one for the breeds. And I'll put one for famous rabbits. We'll just do these three. So I have links to, or I will have links to three sections of my page. What I have to do though is I have to specify the href for these. Okay? I need a way of saying, jump to this spot in this page. And the way I do it is by a combination of two things. First of all, I give a name to that spot that I want to jump to. All right? This isn't a separate web page, so it doesn't have its own file name. All right? So I have to give a name to the different sections. And the way that you give a name to something in... HTML 
is you actually don't give it a name, you give it an ID. An ID identifies a particular thing on a web page. And we're going to use IDs for several purposes, and this is the first of those purposes. If you think about an ID like a student ID, all right, IDs are unique. Whatever your student number is, whatever your student ID number is, you're the only person that has that. Could you imagine the confusion if like, two people had the same student ID? You know, who would get the bill? Who would get the grade? Who would get the degree? You know, these are all bad questions, right? So they make pretty sure that when they assign an ID, every person gets their own. All right? Same idea here. When you give an ID to a portion of the page or to an, uh, an element, you've got to make sure it's unique. You've got to make sure that this is the only thing on the page that has that ID. So, whoops. I'm going to say ID equals overview. And then when I say href, I say pound sign overview. The pound sign tells a browser the thing that you want to link to isn't another web page, because it doesn't start with HTTP. It isn't another one of my full name of the page. The pound sign says link to the spot on the page that has an ID of whatever it says. So in this case, it says overview. So I can do the same thing for the other two pieces. I can create the link here. And I better also go in and give those sections of the page an ID. Now I save it. Look at it in the browser. And there's my links at the top of the page. They show up as links. And when I click on one of them, that comes in the view. Now there's nothing, it doesn't jump to the top of the page because there's nothing after rabbit. But if I make my browser window small, it'll be a little more obvious. So if you imagine my browser window small, if I click on Famous Rabbits, boom, I jump to that section. If I click on Breeds, I jump to that section. Now, there's another thing that you can do, which comes in handy, and I'm surprised they didn't do it in the frequently asked questions example, is to have a link back to the top. Because if you imagine a real long page, and if you don't want to scroll down answer, you certainly don't want to scroll back up to the top. Right? So, how do you make a link to the top? Well, it's a similar idea to this, because I'm linking to a different spot of the page, but instead of saying pound sign something, I just say pound sign. So that means go back to the top. So I'm going to put that at the end of each of my sections.
So I'll save it. So I can click on Famous Rabbits. I go down there. I can click back to top. And I go back to the top of the page. Breeds. Go there. Can read all about them. Click back to the top and go back to there. So these are three different kinds of links that you use, each with their own rules. The basics of them are the same. They're an A tag. They have a starting and ending A tag. They have an href attribute, and the href says what we are linking to. In the case of an external page, we have the complete URL of the web page that we're look, linking to. So in other words, if it's not my page, but it's somewhere else on the internet, you put that full path in, including the HTTP. If I'm linking to another one of my pages, I simply use the name of the page provided in the same folder. And if I'm linking to a section of the page, I create an ID on the sections and then link to pound sign the name of the section. Whereas pound sign by itself indicates the top of the page. Article is one of the ways we can define a section of the page. This is an article about something. There's a couple other sections that you can use on a web page. And these are new to HTML5. In the old days, there was really only one tag that you used for every sort of section on your page. And that's the div tag. Div stands for division, a division of your page, a section of the page. A big improvement in HTML5, there's now a whole bunch of tags that you can use that say exact sections being used for. So, a collection of links is, in other words, a navigation. So I can put these links oops, in a nav tag. So I'll go and save that. And when we do that, it really doesn't make any difference the way it looks yet. Okay? But by being more precise about defining how our web page is structured, that will give us a lot of advantages later on. One of those advantages is as far as being able to style the page, being able to make all the navigations on our whole site look the same way. So, what are these HTML5 structural tags? Well, article is one. Nav is another. Another one is header. Which contains... general information about what the page is, sort of like a head, you know, on the top of a newspaper. All right. So I can say, you know, put an H1 in here. My page about rabbits. All right. On the flip side of things, there's the footer. And the footer is sort of like the stuff that you see on the bottom of the page, on the bottom of web pages. Sometimes there'll be like an email address of the person to, to contact. Or sometimes there'll be copyright information. Or sometimes I'll have a link to the privacy notice of the page. It's sort of important information, but not something that you want to um, 
I won't say you're hiding it, but you're putting it at the bottom of the page and sort of getting it out of the way so people can find it if they want, but it's not like in their face. So in this case, I have a email Mike Zellers for more info. And then I could put my email address. Let me save it. And again, we won't really be able to see much different visually. There's my header. There's my articles. There's my footer. Imagine I can actually make a link for my email address so that will open up the user's email client. So that's the last kind of link that we'll look at today. And the way that you make an email link is you say a href equals, and then you say mail to like that. So when it sees mail to, it says, hey, this is an email address. When that link is clicked on, it's going to open up my machine's email client. So I click that. It's probably going to open up this machine. Of course, I hasn't been set up correctly, so it's not going to actually go and send the email, but we should get the idea. There we go. Welcome to Outlook 2013. If I was installed and configured, it would take me right into the mode where I could send an email. HTML tags for sections of the page. One is just a generic section tag. That's where you're not really sure if it's an article, but you know it's a section of the page, so you can make it a section. The other is what's called an aside. And an aside is where you have like additional information about a topic. You see that a lot in magazines. You might have a main article that talks about you know, an upcoming event. A main article talking about, um, whoa, what would be an event? The Cleveland Air Show coming up this weekend. Now, it might be like a related article to that. Like maybe uh, a profile of one of the pilots. All right? So it's related to the main article, but it's not really part of the main article. And you can sort of read it if you want to, if you're interested, or you can skip it and still get the idea of the main article. So like a lot of times in the magazine they'll have the main article and then they'll have the border around it, the extra bit of information. In HTML you do that an aside tag. It's sort of like a side article. Now, none of these things do much in particular by themselves. All right? I put in a header, I put in a footer, I put in a nav. And it really didn't change the appearance that much. But I've ordered the content, and when we learn and go over CSS in this class, we'll be able to go in and do things like make my header look the same on every page, make my footer look the same, make the navigation look the same, and so on down the line. Questions about this? There's a chapter on text formatting in the book. Please read that. I don't have a lot add to that chapter. So I may hit some of the issues there, but I think you can read it in the book and pretty much get an understanding of it um, on your own. Next time I leave, unless I forgot something and it pops in my head between now and then, next time we're going to cover, we're going to start covering CSS, because I think it's important to cover CSS right from the start, otherwise some of these things just won't make sense. 
We're going to cover CSS, and we might do things like images, I would think. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see how it goes, and I'll have to review my notes. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know you can turn it off so much, but you can go in and say... Because I'm having the trouble that, you know, doesn't bring up the latest... Right, 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 right. Um, you can always go in under history and clear or remove selected things. So I could go and pick this, pick a handful of things and say remove. And that should work. And, and all I did is if you go to Chrome colon slash slash history, or if you go from here, go to settings, then pick history, you should be able to either clear your whole browser history or go and remove that. The other thing is, I don't know if Chrome has it or not. Oh, new incognito window. That probably will do it without caching. Yeah, that that that's a problem. Uh, again, um, web web pages or web browsers, in the interest of speed, will sometimes keep a copy of a web page around. That way, if you go to a page and come back to it, it doesn't have to go out through the web and get a new copy of it. The problem with that is if you're a web developer and you're constantly making changes to the page, you might end up seeing an old version of it. So that's what she's referring to. If you run into that problem, we can, uh, we can address that. Other questions? Yes. Hmm? Okay. I do post these examples as well. All right, other questions? All right, we'll see you over.